So here is a strategy to build a better microscope. Now, of course, they can get more and more complicated, but this is sort of the beginning of a more complex optical design, and we call this a compound microscope because it has more than one lens in it. So here is the object over here, which you wish to magnify. The first lens here is called the objective, and the light will come into the objective. We have a ray parallel to the optical axis here, which passes through f2, which is the focal length of, of this objective. And here we have the other ray, which passes through this focus and then is collimated. And so this objective will form an image somewhere over here. We want it to form a real image, not a virtual image. So the real image is formed somewhere here. The second lens is called the eyepiece. And the strategy is to put this image here from the objective, you put this image at the focal length of the eyepiece so that light from this image comes in to the eyepiece and then is collimated and comes into your eyes parallel. And what this means is that your eyes perceive an image that is somewhere off in infinity. And this is very comfortable for your eyes to see. It's important that you make these microscopes nice to use because if you want to be staring down them all day in a lab, you don't want to have to be sort of squinting and screwing up your eyes to look at something which appears to be close. So there's an enormous advantage for some ergonomics perspective in making the object appear at infinity because that's when your eyes relaxed. So you do this, so your eyepiece makes it, everything look like it comes from infinity. And the action of this compound microscope is to give you some large amount of magnification. First of all, through the objective that, that, magnif that gives you a larger image here. And then the eyepiece, which again magnifies this real image from the objective. There are a few different distances to find here. We've got this um, f objective, which is the focal length of the objective, f ob. Um, and the object distance here is slightly beyond this focal point here to give you a real image. Then the distance between this focal point here and the focal point of the eyepiece is called s in this diagram. And this is the, the tube length of the microscope. So it's how long a tube you have in your microscope. And um, by choosing the focal length of the objective, the eyepiece, and this distance s, you can achieve a wide range of possible magnifications. So this is a compound microscope and allows you in particular to lose, use lower power lenses to make an effective high power lens. So your objective and eyepiece do not need to be these crazy balls of glass. They can be things that are relatively easy to make and a very high optical quality. So as an exercise um, that I'll give you, we can think about uh, if you have an objective with a five millimeter focal length, that's pretty short, so the focal length here is five millimeters, so f ob is five millimeters. And we have an eyepiece with a 50 millimeter focal length. What magnification can you achieve with the above system compared to the naked eye? Now, you want to consider some practical maximum value of s here because you know, s is a free parameter, so take it to be about 20 centimeters. You don't want your microscope to be too enormous. And you can use the approximation that s is much, much bigger than f ob and assume the object distance is approximately equal to f ob. So the object here is going to be approximately at the focal length of the objective lens, and s is much bigger than this focal length here. Using these approximations will make uh, doing this problem a lot easier.